So welcome. I'm very glad to um, to run this uh, this demo for the the valuable SPED members. Uh, this is the second one. Uh, so I'm glad to have you here. Uh, to start, I will briefly tell you about point clouds, laser scanning, uh, and then um, I'll, I'll show you our um, uh, our breakthrough software, um, which is uh, unrivaled as far as uh, point cloud rendering is, is concerned. Um, so first of all, um, so how does it work? Um, to run a, a point cloud digital twin into, into ScanSAP, first uh, you need to scan. So it's a laser scan. Um, which is on site, and you do. You need to do different stations to get all the details um, of the scanned environment. Then uh, you need to install ScanSAP on your PC, on your laptop. Um, ScanSAP has powerful algorithms, um, and that will allow you to handle huge point cloud with billions of points with a fairly low um, uh, specifications. Okay, so you can run huge point clouds with 12 uh, gigaoctet RAM and a, a mid range uh, GPU, uh, so graphic unit, right? Um, and, and from that, it, it takes just a, a glimpse to turn uh, the point cloud. Uh, coming from the scan into the ScanSAP format, okay? Uh, ScanSAP will downsize the size of the point cloud by 60%, okay? So 40% of the size will remain. Um, and we do that without compromise on the accuracy. So we'll keep all the points, all the information. It's just a trick, so you will substantially downsize the size uh, or the point cloud, sorry, but you'll keep the, the accuracy and the exact number of points. And then you'll end up in your, in your laptop uh, with, um, with a, a nice uh, point cloud uh, you can play with uh, and with many features, um, which are very helpful for um, asset management, for engineering, uh, and and uh, and for maintenance and and many different step of um, the building life. So just um, what we promote here is an alternative to the conventional three D model. The conventional three D model is a CAD model, okay, um, and ultimately many will use the CAD model for some reasons, okay? Um, we don't say that CAD is over and that the point cloud will fully replace uh, the, the CAD models, but we think that there is some room for better use of point clouds. Uh, and today we can see many people designing everything with, with uh, CAD software, so AutoCAD, Revit, Archicad, and, and and, and finally, it takes a long time. It's very often expensive. Um, it's not exhaustive, okay, by, by design. Uh, it's more or less accurate. So for some operations, it's better to use the point cloud. Um, and now with ScanSAP, it's far cheaper, far, uh, and also uh, faster way faster, okay? Um, so this is what, what we'll, we'll see in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, you cannot do everything with a point cloud screen, uh, but you can do a virtual tool. You can take measurements, very accurate measurements. You can um, change the layout of your environment, add new machines, copy and paste existing ones, uh, new equipment, uh, set some viewpoints. So you can do so many things. Um, and uh, thanks to ScanSAP, you can do it even though you're not an expert on the software. So you don't need to get yourself trained during hours or, or days to be proficient 
uh, using this kind of uh, point cloud 3D models. So that was about the, yeah, the background um, to explain what was the point of uh, developing ScanSAP. You must welcome to raise uh, questions uh, anytime, of course. So we now, you're now looking at uh, the ScanSAP environment, okay? Um, so what you can see on your screen is a point cloud, okay? Um, and if I get closer from, from the tank here, I can see some points, okay? Um, but globally, this is a point cloud. It's a colored one. So the laser scanning takes or makes two round, 360 uh, round, one to get the points and another one to get the color via pictures, okay? And, and, and the soft will ultimately um, color each and every point and that gives this kind of rendering. Not quite though, because um, one of the features of ScanSAP is to improve the rendering, uh, to make your experience as good as possible. And no one is happy to work in a dirty environment or something which looks uh, dirty. So we started to set some algorithm to improve uh, the rendering and also to make sure that you'll have uh, you will enjoy a seamless navigation like this one. Um, as I said, with a simple gaming laptop or PC. Uh, so this one is a rather small point cloud, but the result will be almost the same with, uh, with a huge one. So first, as you can see here, we have different algorithms you can play with uh, and different settings to improve the rendering of your point clouds because the final result will depend on quite a few things. The equipment, the, the scanning laser you use, the light, uh, and also the material scanned because they won't all have the same reflection. Okay, so um, the result will be different between cast iron and stainless steel, for instance. Um, so this is why you need to have different settings to get the best of your point cloud, whatever the scanning conditions and, and material and, and environment. Okay. So um, in this environment, so obviously you can go where you want. So that's a fully um, 3D uh, environment, okay? And in this environment, you can start to take simple to advanced measurements. So we have here a measure folder. Uh, so you can take simple measurements like uh, from here to here. And that makes a measure. Uh, and this measure is an object and will fill our tree structure here on the left hand side and I'll have a measurement section here with the very last simple measurement I just made, which must be the, this one, 16. I can hide or display this uh, measurement. And there is a property panel for this measurement, okay? I can change the name. I can call it sped one. Okay, I can uh, add a, a URL link, okay, to reach a website or a, any kind of document somewhere. Uh, and I can export this measurement as a, a CSV file. So Excel-like file. Um, so you can do that with simple measurements. Um, you can also use a point to plane. So if I want to check the distance between the pipe here and the control box here, here, and in this case, I have what we call a point to plane, okay? So I'll find the, the shortest distance between the plane of the front side of the control cabinet and, and the pipe, 
Okay, same stuff. There is a property box and, and everything. Um, we also have some advanced uh, measurements like pipe to pipe. So if I use the pipe to pipe one, here I have one pipe and another one. So I can make one click here and another one on the second pipe. Yep, and as you can see, <clears throat> our algorithm detected the two pipes, the two axes, the two diameters, and will offer you all the dimension you might need, the distance between the external shape of the pipes, uh, which is called the free distance, or the distance between the two axes. Okay, so we have many kind of, of different measurements. Uh, there is also the polyline. Um, so if you want to say, okay, um, what is the surface of the um, concrete uh, base here, you can do something like this. Yep. Transparency. I used the, the transparent uh, shortcut uh, on ScanSAP to uh, just highlight the, the measurements. Uh, so now I've used I used a polyline, and uh, for the polyline you can see here that the area is seven point uh, almost two uh, square meters um, inside the polyline. So you will get the surface on every plan of the project. Okay, Pierre. Yep. When you did that, did it automatically select the perimeter of the base? No, nope, I just uh, clicked on, on the corners to okay. do that. But there is another way if you really want to do something like this. Uh, you can use an algorithm to detect the box. Um, and uh, that's on the coming next <laughs> version. And I'm still running the latest release one. But we have now a, an algorithm. Uh, no, no, sorry, that's on this one. So I can, uh, here I'm um, on the model section and uh, I can detect um, a cuboid uh, with two clicks. So I'll have one click here and another one somewhere like this. And uh, as you can see, I pretty much detected the base, basement here. Uh, so I can adjust it slightly just to make sure that I will get the very end of the, of the basement. And, and here we are. Uh, and again, this box um, comes with um, some information like the size, okay, and the position and, and everything. Uh, and, and the volume will come in the next uh, release uh, uh, version as well. Okay, thanks. So talking about uh, detection and, and uh, modelization, so I've just used algorithm to detect uh, cuboid. Uh, the same way I can also detect pipes. Um, so I'll jump next to those pipes. Okay. Uh, and I can use here still the modeling um, section, the model section. Um, I can pick one of the three algorithms. So we have a fast one or a, a, a more advanced one, which is more tolerant to a noisy point cloud. Okay, so depending on the quality, you might use one or another, depending on the quality of your point cloud. Um, so I'll go for the optimized one. Uh, you can also manage your standard. So you can say, okay, I know, the standard in this factory or in for this pipeline is the steel um, EN um, 10216. Okay. And that will help the software to propose you to keep either the detected diameter or um, to switch to the closest standard diameter. So um, we'll try. So I'll detect the pipe here like this one. Here we are. 
but I don't like the detection here, so I'll use the <coughs> extension. So one, two point. Yep. So this is the detection. Uh, and if I look at the pipe properties here, I'm left with different choice. Um, so the detected diameter is 76 millimeters, okay? So by chance or, or by design, I don't know, the closest standard diameter is also 76. Uh, so it works perfectly here, but sometimes you can have some, uh, some gap. Um, so it's up to you to just keep what has been detected to apply the closest standard or to force a diameter to something else. Okay, so uh, it's, it's entirely up to you. That was for one pipe section, but uh, something else you can do with CANSAP is to detect the entire pipeline. Uh, and it works like, like this. So I will still start with the um, um, pipe detection algorithms. Uh, and I will also ask the soft to connect pipes. Okay. Uh, I'll say, okay, keep the diameter because it's going to be the same one all along the pipeline, detect and connect. I'll stick to standard angles for elbows, okay? And I can now uh, connect the pipes. So I need to click two times, one time at the beginning and, and the second time at the end of each, more or less beginning and the end, each pipe sections, okay? Like this one. And you can see now that I have the two pipe sections and the elbow in between. And I can do that again here and here. And I will do it once again here and here. Okay. And you can see that I have detected my first pipeline, okay, which is, yeah, this one. So this one comes again in my tree structure as a pipeline. Uh, and I can uh, now export it. I can select it um, and I can export my selection. as um, a step file or a DXF file. Okay, so I can use the export section here, export it as um, a step. I want to export the piping. I want to export the selected ones. Okay, I'll specify the output folder. This one and the name is gonna be spread Right. Yep. And I have now my pad pipe export here. And I can open it to show you how it looks like. So we have different screens, so it's different windows popping in different screens, but this is the export. Okay of my pipeline. Okay, just one quick question. I forget if I asked this the last time, but does it maintain the center line of that pipe yeah. or is... Yes, it does. So I can yeah, view just the center because in plant 3D at least, I can select the center line and do a line to pipe after choosing pipe size and uh, line number. Yeah. The, it's but probably it, needs to see, it needs to just see the center of the pipe, though. Yeah, so it's probably better to export it as a DXF file then to get the center of the. Okay. the 
Um, but it does, uh, it will, I will um, keep the central line uh, anyway. Um, I can see here, but um, it's better to, to export it as a DXF file to get the central one. Um, so that was about the detection. Um, also, what you can do um, as an export um, is to uh, export um, a part of the point cloud, a clipped part of the point cloud uh, and we have multiple ways to clip the point cloud um, the basic one is is using a clipping box okay uh, so you can here create a box local one um, attach the box here set the size and the position like um, like yeah, like this, and I will just, just color to get the entire compressor here. Yeah, here I am. And now from the box, I can do different things. Uh, first of all, I can set the box transparency. Yep. So now from the box, this is the box 38. Uh, um, which is also in my tree structure. So I'll wrap everything up um, to uh, clean everything. So this is the box list, and this is the box number 38. And I can ask to see only the outside of the box or only what's inside the box. And I can also hide the box. So I could export only what's inside the box, the compressor, or only what's outside the box. Um, and you can play with multiple box like this. Okay. Um, so two different use. Uh, the first one could be to change the environment layout. So for instance, if I want to um, hide this compressor okay i can activate the box and here the compressor just vanished uh, and i can now import something instead sorry yep um so i can import step files or dxf uh, files, uh, D, uh, D -W, uh, J, sorry, uh, G file. So I'm going to get um, something from my computer. So here I have different step files, OK? And I'll import this one, which is a forklift. Uh, I'll go for the smaller one, it's forklift one, this one. So I have different ways to import it. I can either merge all the parts together, and that will be more convenient to play and to move the imported model into uh, the, the 3D environment, or I can leave just as many parts as. Uh, as, as on the original um, model. I can also change the um, accuracy or the level of detail. And then our algorithm will simplify um, or downsize the size of the, of the step and the number of, um, of uh, different parts of parts. So I've just imported the, um, the step. So it comes with a bad um, angle, which I just corrected. Okay, 
then uh, you have now something uh, in your environment uh, and you can play with this. So it's now um, fully a part of your uh, 3D model. Uh, so you can take some measures now uh, between uh, uh, the forklift and uh, something else like this. Okay. <clears throat> um, when I do something of interest, if I want to save the viewpoint and all the view settings, I can use the viewpoint feature here and save it. So here I have my forklift with a measurement. Okay. Um, I could switch to a transparent mode if I wanted to, like this. Okay, so that could be of interest because I want to show that I have enough room to turn the forklift or something. Um, I can set a viewpoint here, create a new viewpoint. I will call the viewpoint spread forklift. Yep. And it's now in my viewpoint list, okay, here. And I can switch any time from my starting point to the one I just set, the forklift. And there's no limit to what you can freeze or record or set with this function. If you want to make the same one without uh, the forklift and with the old compressor, you can do it. Um, so I will now hide the forklift like this. Okay. Uh, I will get the compressor back like this. And I will create a new viewpoint. And it's going to be that one. And I can now switch from the one with the forklift to the one without forklift very easily. So this is very convenient when you have to play different scenarios um, and you want to share it with um, some people from the board to take a decision or some uh, workers uh, so they could bring their two cents on, on the um, on, on, on the layout um, or uh, with your customers, uh, if you want to uh, propose different uh, design. Uh, so that's a very convenient feature. Uh, Paul, you asked me about the different way or the multiple way to clip something. Um, so if you want to clip, something like, um, I don't know, a cable tray. You have a cable tray here. Okay, I'll follow a pipeline or something instead. Okay, this one for instance. Um, to clip it, I can use a polyline. So I've selected the polyline here and I will use the polyline to follow This line uh, right here, here, here. Yeah, that bit last uh, uh, must be here. And again, here, here, here. Okay, so I have my polyline, more or less following the, the pipe. I can uh, use the transparency to check it roughly. So it works more or less. I have a miss here, but it's not a big deal. Uh, and this polyline 
will again appear in my measurements as a polyline here. Must be the latest one. Okay, I'll rename it as a sped polyline. Uh, and I can now clip it. So I will clip the point cloud around the polyline. So it's going to be a, a virtual cylinder around the polyline. So I can Uh, this one, so I can show here we are. So now I can see only what's around the polyline. So, and I can also specify the um, diameter around the polyline. So here it's a 0.3 meter. I could switch to a 0.1 meter or two, two meters, let's say one meter around the polyline. And that will give me something like this. So that's another way to keep the point cloud. Uh, and you can add again, multiple ways to keep the point cloud. So I could have a clipped polyline plus two clipped box plus uh, three clipped tagged all together and export the result as a unique E57 file or recap file that you could import into a CAD software to work on. So that's very powerful. Um, and we have also some uh, features to duplicate boxes um, or, or to segmentate boxes into uh, multiple number, well, a big number of sub boxes, let's say. Um, if you're struggling with your with the size of your point cloud, and if you want to uh, get smaller areas, um, so you can, with CanSAP, you can use uh, this uh, feature of a multiple clipping box. How, how, um, Pierre, how how, yeah. how much time will you need to scan all the all the facility? How many positions you need? On this to... one, it's about uh, thirty different positions. So this one is not a huge one. Um, so I'll start from this, and to show you how big it is, I'll switch to um, orthographic mode, top view here. And okay. this is the main this is the main building. And I can also set the transparency like this. And now I have my building. Okay. Um, and to tell you how big it is, I'll use the polyline. And roughly I'll do something like this. Okay, so we're talking about 210 square meters. Sorry for the meters, uh, but that's about 210 square meters. Um, so we have about 30 different stations. This okay. one, you're looking at a unified, a merged point cloud. Okay, so in the register software, we, we merged the 30 stations together to render a unique point file. Okay, it has drawbacks and benefits, but uh, this is why you cannot see all the different stations on, on this example. And how uh, much time do, do the system require to render, to render all the points? And... On, the, um, on the registering uh, software, you mean? Yes. It's, uh, it's about... Uh, so just to render, it takes, uh, uh, takes yeah, one or two hours, something like this. Okay. Oh, oh you, okay, you mean to do the registration, yeah, of all the individual scans? Uh, all the individual scans, it takes, um, so on this one, we have uh, about 30 different stations, 
and that takes uh, half a day. It takes, uh, yeah, it depends on the way you scan uh, yeah. on your methodology, but it takes, uh, yeah, uh, let's say three hours. Yeah, that's any, that's, it depends on the scanner, but a scan can take as little as two minutes to within reason, maybe six minutes, mm -hmm. depending yep. on your resolution. And if you're taking photographs, full color photographs at the same time. True. So you multiply that by the number of scan positions and you have the total scanning time it takes to do it. Yeah, and it's difficult, the overlaps, the overlaps of different position is difficult for the software to, because you have two points and basically overlapping, no? Yeah, yes. but you, uh, last time I did it, uh, last week, uh, you had these spheres that you attach so that each each scan you do sees the same sphere so it can reference all the scans and then connect them all together. If you don't do that, then you have to manually register each scan with all the others, and it can be very time-consuming and difficult and error-prone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, anyway, I'm trying anyway, to that's reach... Scan. Yeah, trying to see whether I still have some spheres left in the project, but we usually clean it, so uh, I'm likely not to find any. Um, but yeah, Paul's, Paul's right. You have different ways to uh, register the files. You can do um, cloud to cloud registration, which takes a long time. Uh, so complex, well, algorithm will try to find as many common points as possible between two clouds, but that could be more or less accurate and it takes a long time for the, the laptop to uh, to render everything. Or you can use spheres um, and that's a bit more accurate. It's quicker also to register all the scan, but on site, it takes more time because you have to put all the spheres yeah. and it can be also a bit not risky, but tricky because if someone takes the sphere on site <laughs> and move it. <laughs> that, that happened to me last week. <laughs> <laughs> and even though the guys say, well, I just put it at the, at the right same place, but it will never be the right same place, not for the scan because it's uh, we're having a, a under millimeter accuracy. So, uh, so yeah, uh, if you, uh, we usually use fears uh, as a target, but we, when we are uh, in the streets for, for a public building or something with lots of people around, it's just something impossible to implement. Um, I didn't tell you about the tags, but we have different kind of tags you can use uh, to identify all the risk or, or all the point of interest, okay? Um, so tags are 3D labels with also uh, some specifications. So for each tag, you can have a URL link, you can customize the fields, like you could say, okay, what is the next date for the maintenance? Or uh, what is the kind of risk or what is the, so anything, it can be customized uh, at will really. Um, and uh, you can, um, of course, uh, call it or select it. So if I say uh, this one is a, I don't know, a chemical A, okay. So this is my last tag, the chemical, no, that's the box property. So this one, this, this tag is gonna be my chem A, and this one's gonna be my can be, yep, like this. And now if I'm somewhere in between, somewhere else, um, I can look for the chemicals in my tree structure. I can also use some uh, search uh, features. And this is just my chem A and chem B. And if I click on it, I'll go straight to the point. Uh, and that also can be used to clip, as I said uh, before. So if I want to clip my this one, the came A1, um, I can um, activate it and I'll be left with just the drum. 
here. And just like for polylines, I can set the diameter of the clipping sphere around the tag. Um, so that will be here, spheres. So it's a 0.1 meter, but I could go to uh, something else. Uh, sorry, tag. Uh, I, I well thought it was more than a 0.1, so it was one meter, and I could set it to uh, two meters or 0.5 meters. Yep, something like this. So again, this coin of uh, clip can be added to polylines, box, and, and, and multiple clipping, uh, clipping ways. And I'll get back to my starting point. Um, so on the tree structure also, you can create as many clusters as you want, as many folders. So you can set your own organization. So that can be type of risk, type of works, uh, anything, everything. Um, that you can fully customize. Uh, so I'll get back to my uh, few points and I'll use the start one like this. And I did it before, but you can um, you can use the orthographic view. And um, again, set the transparency like this. You can change the background color. You can reverse and use a negative <laughs> effect. Uh, so, uh, and you can use with the, the transparency uh, level. Um, you can reduce from play with different parameters to finally uh, get uh, what, what's uh, the right picture for you. And you can export everything. So uh, it can be as simple as a, a screenshot. And this will just copy and paste the picture into your project folder. Or you can go for a slightly more advanced uh, picture um, creation. You can set your uh, format and your resolution or your scale. Uh, and you can export like this some really high definition pictures uh, with a, a very high level of detail. I think we've been through the main uh, stem side pitches. Um, do you have questions or, or comments? Um, you, you, Maybe you just have... a question from my side. Um, for, for us, we use it mainly when we have asphalt that we have to do or asphalt plant with new things. So can mm -hmm. you take this program and add it to a Binkley product, like Open Plant Modeler, so we can use it? Yeah, to, uh, <clears throat> if you need to compare the, um, the 3D model to this one, um, mm -hmm. you can import your um, IFC model mm -hmm. into ScanSAP. And, and, and visually see the difference between the point cloud, which is the reality, and your model coming from uh, or with your uh, um, IFC file. OK, and you can also then, I assume, export. Like, I think our engineers would like to have, have it in Caesar or in Autopipe. So would that also be, will you be able to do that for the piping? Could you say the format again? So for Caesar, so they can do the stress analysis, or they you for us we use Autopipe or we use um, Caesar. Okay, uh, so I'm not familiar with those softwares, um, okay. but uh, for the pipe uh, again, you can export them as step files mm -hmm. or DXF files. Uh, yes, Sonia, do you mean to do an export 
from the point cloud into a format that can be read by Caesar or auto plant? Yes. Oh, okay. So then you would have to select a pipe like Pierre did and then export to DXF. Yes. And yes. then I don't know, does the Caesar import DXF format? I think um, I must just make sure. I think here uh, at Hatch, we have like a little Excel spreadsheet. I must just confirm again, but yeah, we did some of our clever people did something where you can just export from a model from Bentley and you can take that and import it into a Caesar. So if okay. you can export this in certain file types, then maybe you can make it also exportable and importable into Caesar. So, but yeah, that's something that we probably have to write a script for or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering why you would do that because the piping is already installed. Is the idea to run stress analysis on piping that's already installed and operating? You are, oh, well, Cecil sometimes does ask us to do a re renewed stress analysis, especially if you want to do maintenance on a piping, then they will come and say, okay, but do stress analysis for us for the rest of the piping as well. Okay, it, it's there, but you have to do the stress for it. That's how we did the one the one project we had. It's, everything was already there. And okay. then they realized that none of their supports work. That's why all the piping was breaking and lifting oh. and shearing. Okay, so you so you could run stress analysis on the existing and see what yes. what the yes. what the stress program tells you versus what is installed in the field. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see what you mean. Mm. Okay. Uh, it must, there must be a way to uh, switch from uh, either step or DXF to uh, to Caesar. But again, I, I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with the Caesar import format. Um, yeah. Yeah, because DXF would just give you the the routing, right? So you'd have to append data, and I'm not sure how that would work either. No, I think we can put it into if it's DXF, you can put it into. Mm -hmm. um, DJN format, and from there they can probably take it in and export, import the little programs that they have written, or use the little programs they have written. No, that's fine. Obviously, and uh, that's true for, for everyone here, I can give you a, a trial uh, version of ScanSap, uh, and on our download page there is a, a project, an example project you can play with, with pipes, you can detect uh, and try to export. Uh, so you can see uh, how effective could be, uh, could be the process for, for you guys. In this case, in this scenario, if you select the pipe, you can also give it a pipe number, a pipeline tag number or equipment tag number, right? Yes. Yeah, each um, object has uh, different features, like um, an individual ID number, like this one. Mm -hmm. You can also change the name or give it a name and a new ID, a customized one. So it's, uh, you can, yeah, pretty much do uh, whatever you want with it. Yeah. Okay, now that's and, quite useful. Yeah, and if you say, uh, when you try, when you detect something, if you say, okay, um, I want everything I will detect to be identified as, uh, I don't know, something like uh, uh, acid pipe here. And now if I, uh, um, do my pipe detection, okay, like this here. That creates, as you can see, a pipe called acid pipe. Okay. Yes. Um, and now you can also, uh, again, uh, change the name or add a, 
a new index or a new uh, identifier, so, so anything. And if I export my pipe list as a CSV file, I'll get all the pipe numbers, the starting point, the ending point, the length, the diameter, and, and all the features of, of the pipe. Okay. okay. Uh, and what are the objects that automatically the program detects? The pipes, the tanks, the, the, the pumps? Yeah. So... So far, um, so far we detect cuboids, cylinders, spheres, okay. and pipes. Right. Uh, and we are then, our... then, jeans, then jeans, the pumps, for, for instance. Not really. I mean, I could probably detect the cylinder of the drive here, okay. but that's it. Okay. Um, then gene, I have, all right, okay. If everything made of cuboids, cylinders, spheres will be okay, uh, but it's yet manual. So if I want to get something like uh, like here, uh, I'll have to try to detect the cylinder here, um, and and then my uh, control box uh, here. Um, so it's not really meant to. Um, to detect um, or to model automatically uh, complex objects. Okay. okay. Here you can see I, I got it. I got the driver, more or less. It's not the right diameter, by the way, on this one. Um, so it's it works well for tanks, for pipes, um, basements like or, or base frame like like this one, walls, uh, ground. Uh, so simple things that could be useful for you in a CAD software. Um, the not... line structural beams will it pick that up as well? Like it's you? on. The... Yeah, we on we on the way. Uh, so uh, it's going to be the next release. So a beam like this one uh, will be next detected, and the same way we can handle pipe standards. Uh, we'll be able to handle BIMS standards uh, to propose the closest standard ILH dimension of, of the BIM detected. So the development team is, is, is on it. And, they, and yeah. They, yeah, it's it's going well. The development and then instrumentation will later on um... Will you make it available that you can also detect instrumentation? Like a, if there's a pressure indicator or? Uh, not yet. Uh, like, a, yeah, like a pressure gauge or something like this. This is mm -hmm. what you have in mind or a valve or something. Uh, not yet. I mean, um, many people are working hard to get more intelligence in this kind of software and to mm. be able to detect automatically, ideally, um, as many components as possible uh, with artificial intelligence. Um, we're making, we are making progress, but we cannot yet just run a powerful algorithm and, and classify and segmentate everything. Yeah. That's the plan yeah. in, in few month years i trust we'll get there but we're not there yet no one is able to do it on, on an efficient way uh, yeah from... okay so i guess uh, if there are no further questions we're coming up on one hour now uh are there any other questions Okay, I guess not. Uh, this the video for this event uh, will be uploaded to Sped's uh, YouTube page probably within a couple of days. So if you want to re review it or send the URL to friends, it'll be available. I'll put a note at our LinkedIn page and uh, Facebook page, as well as the website. Super. Th thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Paul, for arranging yes. this. 
Yes, thank you, Pierre. It's great to see this is advancing. I think it was almost exactly one year to last year that you gave a presentation on uh, ScanSAP. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for attending. And uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, uh, we can set a new demo uh, anytime if you uh, want to learn more or get a more specific approach on something, on a process or, or something. Thank you very much, Pierre. It was amazing, the, the software. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>